Now I'd like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. I used to feel that I wasn't one to join in or be a part of a team. I lived my whole life trying to fit in where I could, but mostly feeling useless and alone. It wasn't until coming here that I realized fitting in wasn't the same as actually belonging somewhere. It took very little time to see that God had created a place for me here in Plainfield so that I could actually be useful. I'm so grateful to God every single day for this wonderful opportunity to do His work with an amazing group of people. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara or Ken. Either Barbara or Ken from Pennsylvania, please go ahead. Hello, it's Barbara. I'd like to express gratitude to God for the support of a Plainfield practitioner, for her good judgment, her wisdom, and her courage. I've also been especially encouraged and helped by the Bible studies and round tables. Thanks to all. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good evening. The testimony I was preparing for tonight is about all I am grateful for since attending Plainfield Christian Science Church Independence. And today, something happened with one of my grandsons that demonstrates this point. We have been reminded lately to do personal watches, and this was on my mind when it was reported that during preschool, the little one was inappropriate with an adult. I sat myself down and did a watch while he was sleeping. I decided to keep watch while, until I felt peace. Many things that I have been thinking and learning came to thought. Only One Mind, the 91st Psalm, God's Spiritual Representative, Humility, God is Father, Mother, and Grandmother, God's Angels Unawares, and then sending love to all the children everywhere. Finally, God fulfills all their needs. The watch was done, and since he was still asleep, I was able to write this down. Thank you. And the readings were superb. Thank you. I want to say how grateful I am that we have uh, classes and roundtables on a regular basis. Uh, we've been getting together at least weekly for many years to share, uh, to share inspired thoughts on our lesson, on the Bible, and I have always found it to be tremendously helpful and uplifting. Um, I remember an experience I had a while ago, it was a few years ago, um, after one of our classes uh, that night, I woke up in the middle of the night uh, uncontrollably coughing. I, I couldn't stop coughing. In fact, I was choking. It was uh, so severe. But one of the statements that we talked about in the class that night uh, before uh, came right into my thought. And the statement from Science and Health that came to my thought was, man is incapable of sin, sickness, and death. Well, that was uh, right there in my thought because uh, I had always had a little trouble with that statement uh, until that class. Because every time I'd read it before then, I always thought, well, wait a minute. I look around and I see a lot of people that seem to be capable, very capable of sin, sickness, and death. So I wasn't, uh, I guess I didn't get it. But in that class, there was an explanation that cleared it all up for me. And the explanation that was given in that class was, 
God is incapable of sin, sickness, and death. Therefore, I, as his image and likeness, in truth, am also incapable of sin, sickness, and death. And no matter what appears, that's the truth about me and all of God's children. And it, was, it came to me so clearly in the middle of the night, and it was such a powerful statement, it was so clearly the truth that it was only a matter of minutes before the coughing stopped and the irritation in my throat, which had been unbearable, left, and I was able to sleep peacefully throughout the rest of the night, and I never had that problem again. I'm so grateful for the classes that we have because they, they genuinely reinforce the truth. And I'm so grateful for what I'm learning here and for the practice of Christian science that everyone here really strives for. It's a great place to be. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. I want again to express my unending gratitude for the Plainfield Roundtables on Sunday at 10 o'clock. They are being essential to my advancement in living a Christian life. This past Sunday, there was instruction to be sure always to behold and think of the perfect man in interacting or thinking about our fellow human beings. We were advised not to get into a human rot of thought about someone because what one thinks impacts those he is dealing with. We must see them as obedient to the mind that made them, spiritual, unlimited individuals, not human limited personalities. Ask what God says about them. Expect them to do right. Those were the kinds of instructions we were being given. This discussion was a healing for me. It caused me to realize that also my relationship with someone in my life has improved over the course of my time at Plainfield. I was still thinking incorrect thoughts about this person as being an overwhelming personality hard to be around. Thanks to this roundtable, I recognized this incorrect thought for the first time and have been able to turn it out for good. And I know it will be a blessing for both of us. Thank you, Plainfield, for your clear, correct, and continual teaching. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Tonight I'd like to give gratitude for what brought me to Christian Science because it really has changed my life. Um, my parents had science and health. I finally found out uh, not too long ago. But they, they, we were not brought up as Christian scientists. We were Methodists. We attended Sunday school and they were very strict in having us learn the Bible stories and so on. But anyway, uh, when my father retired, he had a stroke and was taken to the hospital. And there, of course, he wasn't making much progress, so they said that he was going to die uh, in a very short time. My mother decided to bring him home and take care of him there and, you know, pray as they usually do or whatever the outcome may be. But then she remembered that my father had been visiting a practitioner prior to his retirement. This was the only one practitioner in Ghana at the time. So she called her, and when she came, she spent some time, quite, quite some time with my father in the room and gave my mother some citations to be read to him continually. And turns were taken in reading this to my father. And... In about, about three days or so, he got up and was able to do 
what he usually does, amazingly, without any medical help at all. This healing really had an impact. He lived 17 years after that before his passing. But it really said something, you know, as my sister first was following, uh, started to follow Christian science, and then when she saw me struggling years after with my life, not getting anywhere, not getting any help, she urged me to also uh, look into Christian science. So we both took class instruction and so on. But my gratitude is for the fact that someone's healing has had such an impact on my life. It's changed my, the course of my life completely. It's made me feel like I'm living again, and I cannot be thankful enough for this. It brings me to say that I'm grateful for joining Plainfield because here the importance of sharing our healings was made so clear right from the beginning. I wasn't actually a part of it, but I was um, joining through their tapes and so on. But it made me appreciate the necessity of sharing what our experiences are. Seeing someone's healing completely changed my life, and that makes me grateful for the discipline of also trying to share my experiences because we can never know whose life we can change. Thank you so much for the readings and for the hymns and for the testimonies so far. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful readings. There's a statement from Science and Health that has proved so true for me. Divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. God has blessed me so much since coming to this church. Well, a while back, I needed to replace my car. I called a practitioner from this church, explained the situation, and was told to let God care for me, and this was a step forward. I was able to quickly and easily get a rental, which included the feature of being picked up and then returned home at the end of the rental process. I asked for more help and was told it was already established in mind and very good because from God. I got some suggestions from a church member of perhaps where and how to get a car. I went to a nearby dealer and met with a salesman and drove a couple of cars. The next day I went back to talk further. I left the dealer driving my new car. In addition, the dealer took my old car as a trade-in and also arranged to have the rental returned. Everything fell together just perfectly. My deepest thanks to God and the practitioner for this wonderful blessing. I'm so grateful for Christian Science and to be a member of this independent church. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I've been thinking lately about what my life was like before, um, before I came to this church, and it was quite empty. I, I used to wonder why. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What is, what is life about? And um, I was raised in Christian science, but I really never got any answers. And then when I found this church, there was such conviction and such strength in the teaching here that my eyes began to open. I began to really understand what Christian science is all about. And I found out why we are here, to express God. And uh, it just is, it's the most wonderful mission that there could ever be, the most wonderful way of life that there could ever be. And um, I am just so very grateful. After I came here, um, I've had so many healings. My, my husband was healed of alcoholism. Um, there have been wonderful healings that we've had. And each one of them 
they don't leave you where you where where it found you. You you grow and you um, just get higher and higher with each one, and you learn more about God and drop the old stuff. And I am so very grateful for this church, and awfully grateful for those readings tonight too. They were lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Day Day from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. Just after Thanksgiving last year, a classmate of mine told me that her dog had been missing since the day before Thanksgiving, and she asked the whole class for help. I let her know that God was right where her dog was and that I would be praying, and I worked with the truth that God was with her dog and that there's no loss. About two weeks later, I called my friend to check on her, and she let me know that there were still no signs of her dog. I let her know that I refused to give up and that I would keep praying. A month later, just two days after Christmas, I had been thinking of my friend all day, and when I called her in the afternoon and asked about her dog again, she told me that he was found in the parking lot by a lady who lovingly cared for him while searching for his owner. She was able to trace the dog back to my friend through his registered microchip and had returned him just 10 minutes before I called. My friend was grateful for my support and I'm so grateful to God for this demonstration and for every demonstration. I'm grateful to Mrs. Eddy for her teachings that are strengthening our work, for our practitioners who support our work consistently for learning through playing fields never to accept the negative verdict. And I'm so thankful that my growing trust in God and love for my friend overpowered my fear and allowed me to persist in prayer to see the right result. I'm so grateful for everything going on here in this church. Thank you so much for tonight's readings and for tonight's meeting. Thank you. Tom from New York, go ahead. Hello. Um, I just want to mention something that uh, I found useful with the website uh, you know, about a year or so ago. Um, it's just uh, generally I didn't really have much interest in listening to the music on, on the website. It, um, just uh, um, uh, it doesn't say anything good or bad, just, just no interest. So. Um, you know, but I found a lot on the website that was really helpful, um, articles, et cetera, and the watches and so forth, and, and just loved reading that. But, you know, at times if I found that I was struggling with something, had some issue or some problem, you know, and then I, I, I find myself just reading and reading, and next thing you know, I'm just reading for the sake of reading, and, and uh, which means I'm not getting anything out of it. And um, so what occurred to me a little over a year ago was, well, then you need to do something different. Um, and so I browsed to the website, and it came to the uh, to the songs, and so I played those, and I found that absolutely wonderful. I mean, it kind of broke the mesmer mesmerism, you know, and that's kind of a, a, what was wasn't getting out of it by just reading words. Um, and so um, I found that uh, if if I don't seem to be making any progress, um, look through the website, find something that's different. Um, and and, and um, use that. And so for me, it was was the music, um, and I used that recently. And um, um, I find it just uh, a really nice way to um, um, get my thoughts off of things and just listen to the music. And I found it very very helpful. And so I, I really appreciate the the richness of, of of the website. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to give a word about gratitude tonight, if I may. There was a time, and it seems like it's not too long ago, when I did give thanks on occasion, like when I felt that it was uh, convenient and it was more of a formality and uh, maybe a sense of duty even, and didn't really carry much in the sense of 
being natural and spontaneous, heartfelt gratitude, gratitude for God. And then recently we had on our website in the carousel uh, an article written by Herbert Eustace entitled Gratitude. Uh, so I read it and uh, he, he talked about a minister who went to an old church, found an old prayer book that they had, used to use there, started looking through it, and found there were a lot of prayers where the congregation asked God for things, you know, good crops, uh, good weather, you know, safety, whatever. And those prayers were very heavily used, very frequently used. And then that there were other prayers that were simple, sincere, heartfelt gratitude for God for all of his blessings. And those prayers were used very seldom. And he thought, and when Herbert Eustace went on to make the point that it shouldn't be that way, we should acknowledge God's blessings and give thanks to him. And when I, after I read that article, I just remembered Jesus, before he fed the multitude, he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and then he gave thanks. And then he fed the multitude of thousands. Before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he gave thanks. And then he called him out of the tomb. So he's our way shower. So I decided to follow him as best I could. And when I just simply gave thanks to God for all his blessings and acknowledged in my heart that his creation was perfect and harmonious, regardless of outward appearances, therefore there was nothing that I needed to ask for other than to have my eyes opened to see his creation, I found that I was far more peaceful, satisfied, and I opened my eyes to see that I had everything I needed. And that alone is a blessing that's worth much. So I'm very grateful for what we've learned here about gratitude, Mr. Eustace's article, and how good God is. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the testimonies and the readings today. I, uh, I've been blessed the last couple of months. I've been blessed to have an opportunity to, to grow in an area of the field that I work in. And, uh, but every so often, uh, God is my supply. Every so often, I feel like uh, I'm lacking, but I, I'm not. <laughs> And, and uh, I've been working with a practitioner off and on and was told that your allowance is a daily one given by the king forever. And it has been so true. But still, during that time, every so often, I get a kick and I feel like I'm lacking. But I'm not. I pray to God and I have the article of finance from on the, uh, on the website too that Try to list my thought. I should not have, I should realize that I have a consciousness of plenty and that each of God's ideas are complete. And lifting the thought like that the other day, almost immediately, the place for my supply just came to me and then I received it quickly and my bills were paid. And I, uh, I think for the continued support that I get in the friendship that uh, <laughs> always makes me feel encouraged at um, going forward. So uh, this is just a wonderful, God-loving uh, and, and supportive place, a family where you can get whatever help you need during times of uh, special learning, which is a blessing, and any any time. I thank God for Mary Baker Eddy, who's put together something that drew us all here. Thank you. Thank you. Betty Cass. Betty from California, go ahead. Hello. Um, I'm very grateful for the Bible studies and the round tables. Um, I know some previous testifiers that expressed gratitude tonight for this, but it's so true. This church, they're wonderful, the Bible studies and the round tables. Um, 
I've always loved the Bible, but because of the Bible studies, I have a much greater appreciation and love for the Bible. And in addition, even more important to me was I now really understand how much our textbook, uh, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy, is based on the Bible. I know I, I grew up, you know, we'd read the Bible and the science and health with the lessons, but because of the Bible studies. Because of the Bible studies, it's really so much clearer um, that it's solely based on the Bible. Um, the round tables are also wonderful. The teaching is so spot on that it often feels like the lessons are just for me. And I know that's because the... So much love and truth is being expressed, and the Christ is being expressed, that no matter who is listening, each person is going to feel that it's just for them. And that was so true this Sunday. I also am very grateful uh, for things that we get when we call our practitioners for help. And one of recently, one of the things that came to mind, what that was t- told to me, was I was uh, in in the middle of a personal problem, and she said to step lively and don't be a sitting target for error. In other words, don't get all muddled into this problem and everything, and only think about that, but focus on God and step lively. What can I do for God? And that has helped so much. I'm so very grateful for this church. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth. Elizabeth from Georgia, go ahead. Yes, thank you so much for the beautiful readings tonight. Um, a couple of months ago, I noticed that at times my heart seemed irregular, and I would wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning, and I I could feel something abnormal. And in working with a practitioner, some of the ideas she shared was that heart beats for God, and I live for God, and that organs are ideas of God. She also asked me to study the question in miscellaneous writings, do you believe in a change of heart? Mrs. Eddy says there that uh, there must be a change from human affections and desires and aims to the divine standard, and that human affections need to be changed from self to benevolence to love for God and man. It came to me I was holding a personal sense of certain family members, how they were acting, and I also realized that I I just had this, was harboring some fears about that and some other things. And that that irregularity just vanished very quickly when I let go of that uh, fear and the false responsibility I had of my children. And I'm just very grateful for that and for everything I'm learning. Thank you. Thank you. Laverne. Laverne from Arizona. Go ahead. Oh, Laverne. Laverne from Maryland. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I've been away on business for a couple of months, and I returned home yesterday, and I had to go to the office this morning. And as I stopped at the guard station, the security guard said to me, you must not have allergies, Ms. Laverne. Then he pointed to all the pollen all over my car since I hadn't had time to wash the car. And I said, no, I don't. And immediately, thank God, because I suffered from allergies for years and was healed through Christian science while working with a practitioner from this church. It was one of the first healings that I I experienced since coming to Plainfield. And for this and so many other healings, I am so grateful. And I continue to be grateful for Christian science, this church, and for practitioner support. I don't know where I would be without it. Thank you all for being here tonight, and thanks for the wonderful readings and those heartfelt testimonies. Thank you. Well, 
that's great to have Laverne back. <laughs> we've all, anytime we don't hear from somebody, I know we all miss them. Um, tonight, I'll read a few things from our church website bulletin board, uh, Pennsylvania. And it's a thank you to Joseph for reading and taping the lesson sermons each week for all of us to enjoy and gain inspiration. It is interesting how some of the words stand out more clearly to be thought of in a different way than when I read silently. When Joseph read from the lesson, Saul, Saul, so tenderly, I realized that Jesus didn't yell at Saul. He didn't have to. Saul was being changed to Paul, quietly and powerfully. And then also from Pennsylvania, thanks to one and all for the excellence that you all do. It's awesome. And then California, thanks for the daily watch this week, 5, 11, 15, just what I needed. So we're grateful for all your gratitude, <laughs> statements of gratitude and the wonderful uh, testimonies we heard tonight and the wonderful readings. In the, in the lesson today, this week, uh, in Science and Health, it's in the definition of man in the glossary, but Mrs. Eddy says that man is idea, the image of love. He is not physique. I remember uh, some time ago when I was struggling so much with fear, uh, fear would seem to block any sense of love that I had because I was always worried about everything. And that statement meant so much to me uh, to think that I am, that you are, the image of love. That's with a capital L. If we declare ourselves to be God's image and likeness, we are that image of love. And when we strive to get ourselves out of the way, uh, we can express this divine love, not the human love, but a divine sense of love. In the Bible, it, it says that perfect love casteth out fear. And I, I realize that you cannot be fearing and be loving at the same time. It's impossible. So I attacked my fear in many different ways, but one of, one of the ways was this. If I was fe feeling fearful, I would ask myself, well, how can I love more? How can I, how can I be that image of love? For instance, because I know I did this a lot and it's perhaps a common one, if I was feeling fearful for a family member, worried about them in some way, I would think, well, instead of worrying, how can I love? How can I love? How can I express this love of God? How can I be that image of love? A and thoughts would come to pray, to say the statements of truth, not to be worried, but to know that the angels of his presence was surrounding this person, that God's love was with them, and that I could trust God's love. And this was such a wonderful release and relief to me. And I, I remember it to this day, and I still think of it often, that man is the image of love. I'm so grateful for Mrs. Eddy, for this powerful textbook, every sentence just comes forth with power as we use it and make it our own, changes our lives forever. So grateful to be here tonight. Thank you.